Hello everyone, there we go. My name is Sumitra, for those of you that don't know me. And one thing you have to know about me, even if you don't know about me, is that I'm sports obsessed. I love all types of sports. Right now, I'm currently obsessed with football as well as motorsport. And you know, this has been a long journey. I've loved sports for many years. That's me at six years old. This was me attending my first footballing tournament. And in hindsight, this picture was quite an important day in my life because it was the day I publicly pledged my alliance to Liverpool Football Club. Now, just a little background. Uh, my uncles had a big part to play in my love of sports as well as football um, and Liverpool specifically. They were watching online, so they would be smiling. Um, they basically made it their mission to ensure that the firstborn of the family was a Liverpool supporter. And I mean, they didn't have to wait that long um, to achieve the mission because, I mean, I love this team since I've been six years old. But they forgot to mention one key thing, and that was that I would have to wait 21 years for this moment. I know, I, we laugh at it now, but your being a Liverpool fan is a journey. There's been many ups and many downs. But don't worry, Eves, I'm not here to chat about Liverpool. I'm actually here to talk about one of my other more recent favorite teams. And no, it's not a conflict of interest because this team is a lot lower down the divisions, but they still manage to possess a massive global audience. And that team is hashtag United. Yes, it's the only United I will ever support. The name might be baffling to some, but it's basically inspired by the online and digital culture that the team are heavily involved in. And because, they, because they're so digitally involved, they've managed to acclaim quite a lot of YouTube subscribers, more than many pro clubs. So as things stand, there's been a hyper-digitalization within sports. You know, our sporting cultures, from the way we buy tickets to the highly controversial VAR, they're massively intertwined with technology. And this has resulted in expectations from fans for their clubs to be online as well as active on the various different platforms. And it's kind of translated into an expectation to see players or athletes on these social platforms or the internet in general. I mean, if you look at Cristiano Ronaldo being the most followed person on Instagram, it really speaks to um, this expectation, which is going to only grow and get bigger. And that's where Hashtag United come in, because they've managed to jump on this digital trend early, and they are massively benefiting from the online expectations of fans. So who are Hashtag United exactly? Well, they were founded in 2016 by Spencer Owen, who is a YouTuber. He's the third man from left. Um, they are a semi-pro club from the United Kingdom. Semi-pro just basically means that all the players that play within the, the club have full-time jobs in addition to playing football. Um, they currently play in the eighth tier division in the UK. And they basically started out as a way for Spencer to get all his mates together, um, play some football while also creating some great content. And, follow, and his following at this time, they were really engaged and they wanted to see more of this YouTube team. That was it, what, what it was informally coined as. And so they entered something called the Wembley Cup, um, which is a charity tournament. Uh, where they get a bit of, where they get club legends as well as different teams to play in, and they basically raise funds for, for charity. But Hashtag United at this time was never really a competitive club, and there was no proper structure within the team. Fast forward to 2016, the demand from fans was so high, and they wanted to see this internet content. Um, so Spencer decided, you know what? I'm going to make this a formal thing. He entered his club into non-league, where they were promoted in their first season. And some more recent major successes of the club, they made it all the way to the preliminary round of the FA Cup in their debut season, which is also very impressive. And as a fan, although they didn't make it very far, um, I do believe that in the future they will see a lot of success. But what fascinates me most about Hashtag United is the model which it's built on. You see, Hashtag United for football team don't rely on ticket sales at all. How many clubs can say that? They do have a pro esports team which does bring in quite a lot of money, but their main form of income comes through monetized online videos as well as sponsorships. 
Now, doing what the internet crowd does best, they got together a content creation team. And a gap that this content creation team found was that because they were non-league, there was no TV broadcasters. And because there's no TV broadcasters, that means no TV income. But then they're still sitting with this global audience that want to stay engaged and connected. So how are they going to join the two? Well, simple solution. They became their own broadcasters. So they have a YouTube members only video section where you pay a small subscription and you can watch the match days live. Um, yeah. So this is Marcus and Lewis. They, Marcus actually transitioned from being a player to a massive role in the content team. And it's kind of cool to see that they've become these like micro celebrities within the community. And another thing that Hashtag does, which I thought was pretty cool, um, a lot of the players due to injury or health reasons can no longer play football and they transition them into the behind the scenes, making them become a part of the staff. But things haven't always been smooth sailing. You see lockdown posed a lot of challenges for this team. Non-league was cancelled in the UK, which resulted in them not being able to provide their audience with the football content that they were there for. In this time of major uncertainty though, high risk, high reward, they decided to expand. So they went from having one team to having over four teams by completing a women's merger as well as a youth merger to become the fully fledged club that they currently are today. And then finally, when some restrictions were lifted, they got their fans involved once again because the fans are the core of the, of the club and they actually got to um, have a say on who gets an opportunity into the first team trials and they got to vote on, on the player. So what can we learn from a model like Hashtag United? Well, firstly, especially in a post-COVID society, no club can solely rely on ticket sales. I mean, if, if you look at what happened to Barcelona and their whole financial crisis, a large portion of that was due to a lack of ticket sales. Secondly, the future of sport, I believe, is digital. So smaller teams can boost their engagement as well as reach through utilizing relatively inexpensive mediums. And lastly, when branching out any club, they should always prioritize eSports. So how it works at Hashtag, they have a, an incredible eSports team. They loan out their players for a certain duration and they make a large amount of profit by loaning out through the loan agreements. So for example, they loaned out um, two of their players to Premier League teams for the Premier League tournament and yeah, made a ma massive profit off of that. So one thing I like to do is always bring it back to the South African context because I truly believe that both smaller as well as larger clubs in South Africa could benefit from a model like Hashtag. So we know that grassroots football in, in South Africa needs a solid foundation because there's currently one that's lacking. And we know that there's multiple stories of junior pros not making it fully pro um, and they aren't equipped with any other skills. So they're kind of stuck. So there's nothing to do. And we also know that even pre-COVID times, the PSL couldn't really rely on ticket sales. So now's the time to jump on a digital trend because as you can see through this graph, YouTube is currently the one medium that's competing with your free-to-air channels. So that means, free-to-air means basically your SABCs as well as your ETVs. Um, so I know what you might be thinking, okay, well, what about the data prices in the country? Well, South Africa are moving from analog TV towards digital TV, and that would impact the data prices um, of our country, making it a little lower. So now's the time to hop on board and get involved. And I know that, you know this model has actually proven successful for a club like Hashtag. They managed to sell um, players to bigger clubs, giving um, the futures of those, play of those players a little sorry, giving the futures of those players, um, making it better. And I mean, they've also managed to um, attract a lot of uh, private investment. So Cesar Azpilicueta, who's the current Chelsea captain, he's now a co-owner of the club, um, which is really amazing. And who knows, one day we might even see these two legends playing for Hashtag United. So yeah, thank you.